What's up everybody, Atticus here. So there are tons of pre-raid best in slot gear guides out there, but now that we know how Blizzard intends to release PvP content, I wanted to take a look at the best possible gear you can get before we get the chance to start ranking. So this is going to be a pre-PvP best in slot guide. First I'm going to talk about the best piece with a bit of detail, then I'll mention a few other options, but I don't want to go into too much detail with those or this video might take 3 hours. So let's jump in. First and foremost, your head slot. The best possible helm you can get from the beginning to the end of vanilla as a DPS warrior, whether it is PvE or PvP, is going to be Lionheart Helm. This thing has 18 strength, 2% hit, 2% crit. It can be pretty pricey depending on how many blacksmiths have the plans on your server, so holding off till a few days before phase 2 drops might be the cheaper way to go overall, but I would just grab it as soon as you've got the gold for it because the value it gives is huge. Some of the other options you might want to consider would be Helm of Wrath. I know this is a tanking helm, but the selection is limited early on in Classic, and the amount of stamina this gives is nice, and survivability is obviously important in PvP. Aside from that, Helm of Valor would be a good third option. Neck piece is up next, and we've got Anixia Tooth Pendant. This one might be a little difficult to get as it comes from the head of Anixia quest, but nonetheless, this would be your best option. Not far behind that, with a good chunk of attack power, would be Will of the Martyr, and another good option is Mark of Fortring. As far as shoulders go, Spalders of Valor are going to be your best bet as they have the best stats for plate shoulders, and those are going to come from Warchief Rend Blackhand and Upper Blackrock Spire. Ebon Steel Spalders are also a good option, and True Strike Shoulders are obviously great, and you can consider them here, but I wouldn't use too many pieces of leather in PvP, so I suggest limiting it to two, maybe three, just gotta be careful when you're sacrificing armor. On to the back piece, the best option is going to be Cloak of the Shrouded Mist from Ragnaros. The 22 agility on it is going to translate to just a little over 1% crit, so you can't go wrong there. The other two options would be Stone Skin Gargoyle Cape and Cape of the Black Baron. All three of these are neck and neck with the stat allocation, so any of these wouldn't be a bad option. For chest, there isn't a lot of plate options in Phase 1, but I think the best overall is Breastplate of Valor. This drops from General Dracosath and Upper Blackrock Spire, and the stats on this are pretty good, especially in comparison to the other options like Demon Forge Breastplate, which obviously doesn't have great stats, but having an effect like it has is kind of like adding something else to your toolkit. So I'm not saying it's the best option, but considering the options this early are so limited, this one can be really useful. And of course, Death Dealer Breastplate has some pretty good stats as well with the crit it provides, but I rank this one under Breastplate of Valor because its stamina is so low, but it is a good option. And as for Bracers, Bracers of Might are going to be the strongest as far as stats go, which come from Trash Mobs and Molten Core. They are a part of a tanking set, but they don't actually have any tanking stats on them. And they are BOE, so you can also buy them off the Auction House. But if you need more hit, Battleborn Arm Bracers are a good option, and another option for solid stats would be Bracers of Valor, which is also a BOE. On to Gloves, Flame Guard Gauntlets have a ton of attack power on them and 1% crit. So these are perfect, especially with that stamina on there. These are going to drop from Magmadar, Baron Geddon, Golamag, and Gar in Molten Core. So you actually have a decent chance of getting these. But if you need the extra hit and happen to get Gauntlets of Might, those would be a good option with straight stats as they have the hit chance. Again, these are a tanking piece, but the raw stats they give make them worth it. The last option I would recommend would be Reaver Claws. They have some pretty good stats too. Now, you could also go with Devil Star Gauntlets and the Devil Star Leggings. These two are great, especially together if you need the extra hit. But as I said, you should try to limit the amount of leather you are wearing in PvP. And if you don't need the hit, the extra armor you're going to get from wearing plate is going to be far better than any slight increase in stats. For your belt, Onslaught Girdle gives you an incredible amount of strength, and it has Stam, and it has Crit, and it has Hit. Nothing better that you can get in this phase, and these are going to drop from Ragnaros, so they may be a little bit harder to obtain. So another good option with decent stats would be Handcrafted Master Smith Girdle or Brigham Girdle. And for your leg slot, Handcrafted Master Smith Leggings are the best option. They come from Garluck Anvil Crack, which is a rare spawn in Upper Blackrock Spire. If you can't get lucky enough for that, I would just take the hit on armor and grab Devil Star Leggings. But if you happen to get Flame Waker Leg Plates, even though these are tanking legs, the stats are still pretty good and the Fire and Shatter Resist can't hurt. Your options for boots are all very similar and have their strengths and weaknesses, so Sabatons and Might rank the highest in my opinion just because of the stamina, but again, a tanking piece, so it might be a bit difficult to get these. So Ribsteel Foot Guards and Master Cannoneer Boots are almost on par as far as stats go, and the difference is going to average out to be negligible. So you can get Sabatons and Might from Gehennis and Molten Core, Ribsteel from Uruk, Doomhowl and Lower Blackrock Spire, and Master Cannoneer Boots from Cannon Master Willy and Stratholm. 
Now with your rings, there are quite a few options. The best two are going to be Band of Akiria, which comes from Ragnaros, and Quick Strike Ring, which comes from Magmadar, Baron Geddon, Golemag, and Gar. But for these slots, you might want to consider a few easier to obtain options to help you be able to play around with your hit cap, such as Blackstone Ring, Band of Flesh, and Painweaver Band. Now for trinkets, I don't think there is really any other options other than Hand of Justice, which drops from Emperor Dagron Tharasan in Blackrock Depths, and Blackhand's Breath, which is a quest reward from For the Horde for Horde, and General Drakathsath Demise for Alliance, which takes you into Lower Blackrock Spire, but nonetheless not too hard to get, and of course, once you start ranking, you want to replace Blackhand's Breath with your PvP trinket. On to weapons. There's no real reason to go for any specific type based on race because weapon skill doesn't apply in PvP. The only thing that your weapon type dictates is the specialization you'll spec into in arms, but all of them have their uses and overall a better weapon is going to be more effective as opposed to which specialization it falls under. So the best weapon you can get this early on is going to be Bone Reaver's Edge from Ragnaros. This thing is just too damn good. Armor penetration is amazing in PvP and this will literally cause you to do true damage to clothies when it's fully stacked and true damage to leather. It's also going to turn mail into cloth and plate into leather. It also has great damage and 1% crit. Now under that, even though it's a legendary, Sulphurous Hand of Ragnaros is amazing but still not as good as having armor pen. But I mean, seeing a warrior running at you with Hand of Rag is pretty scary, so definitely a great option if you can somehow get it before Phase 2. Another great option would be Earthshaker. People really seem to underestimate mace specialization for warriors, but it can do wonders for you, especially if you have a weapon that has a chance to knock them down or stun them as well. For your range slot, Striker's Mark has a good amount of attack power and 1% hit chance, and it drops off of Magmadar and Molten Court. So again, if you need the hit, then this is the best bet. But an easier option for hit is Black Crow. If you don't need the hit, then you can go with Blaster Shot Launcher or Rip Hook. Now you're also going to need a good sword and board for when you need to D up. And when you do throw those on, aside from surviving, you should still be trying to gain an edge in the fight. So these are going to be offensive defensive options. Iron Foe from Emperor in Blackrock Depths is going to be the best because of its burst potential, but it also would have a higher chance of proccing your Crusader enchant because of its effect. And I'm going to go over enchants here in a minute, but having Crusader on both your two-hander and your one-hander gives you the chance to have both proc at the same time as they come from two different sources. The second best option would be Fell Striker, because when its proc goes off, if the server functions in a way that suits this and you're able to land an attack as soon as you switch to your two-hander instead of it resetting your swing timer, then having a guaranteed crit would be nice, but it's up in the air and we don't know for sure yet how certain things like this will function. And there are a ton of other options for one-handers in PvP. They all have their applications in their own way, but the key takeaway here is to have Crusader on both your one-hander and your two-hander so you can get the double proc. And for your shield, it will be expensive because it's a very good, very rare world drop, but Skullflame Shield is just too good to pass up. It has two great on-struck effects that can be very beneficial. The other two options have on-struck effects as well, and they are Crest of Retribution, which comes from Strathholm, and Drill Bore Disc from Gar and Molten Core. Before we move on to enchantments, here are a few honorable mentions. A great option for a two-hander would also be Arcanite Reaper. It's got a really slow speed, which equates to big crits. And then a couple Bone Reaver's Edge-like items, Annihilator and Rivet Spike. Though these are both one-handers, they have their use. And lastly, Herd Smasher, which would just be super fun when you D-up. And now for enchants. For your head slot, there are a few different options. If you feel like you have enough health or are going to have a consistent group with decent healers to PvP with, then you can grab a Lesser Arcanum of Veracity and get the 8 Strength one. But if you want more survivability, you can grab the 100 health enchant, Lesser Arcanum of Constitution. ZG won't be out yet, so no shoulder enchants are available. Cloak, you'll want 3 agility. Chest, you can go with 3 stats or 4 stats. Or for more survivability, you can grab Major Health, which gives you 100 health. Bracers, you want 9 strength or 7 strength. Gloves, you want to get 7 strength or 7 agility depending on what your preference is there and how much crit you have. It won't be game changing, but it could make a difference. For legs, you can grab the 8 strength or the 100 health arcanum, just like you did for the head. For boots, you need to have minor speed. There is no other option here. If someone has it and you don't, they can kite you for days upon days. And for weapons, you want to get Crusader, it's just the best, and I don't think weapon chains are going to give you as much overall value. And for shield, you want to grab yourself a shield spike. 
Well, that wraps it up for the pre-PVP best in slot list for Warriors. If you guys want to see me do a guide for all the consumables and gadgets that could be useful, just let me know. Or if you want to see a guide like this for other classes, just drop a comment down below. Leave a like on the video for me, subscribe to my channel, and of course, stay strong and stay hungry. See ya!